Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanter channel. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, reproduction Georgian and Regency decanters again. Um, yeah, I know I've done it already, but I have a bit more material I'd like to show you. Um, some of it you might see around, some of it is a bit more rare. But um, yeah, I asked if people would like to see it and a couple of people said they would. And seeing as I don't have that many followers, I thought that's enough. So um, yeah, so I hope you like this and um, and what I'm going to show you also, I'm going to show you the extremes of the most plausible reproductions and uh, least plausible. So here we go. So I'm starting with the least plausible. Um, these are copying um, Prussian shape uh, decanters from uh, sort of, yeah, late Georgian. Regency period, um, and they're really more like cartoons of what they should be like. The neck rings, let me pull this one over. Yeah, the neck rings are not really applied ones. If you put your finger inside, they're actually pressed out from the inside, so I can, yep, that's the ring my finger goes into the ring so yeah so it's not like a normal rings are usually um like a sausage of glass wrapped around the outside and these are not that um yeah and the design is very a bit too deco and uh, that's because that's what it is so yeah these are ooh, these are made by Stuart Crystal um, in the 1930s, this pattern here, this little cut pattern, is called Woodchester, designed by Ludwig Kanai. And um, yeah, so I know exactly what they are, 1930s. Also this one, this um, claret decanter or claret jug, depending on what you want to call it, with um, the handle. The, the stopper is a bit more realistic than the other one. Uh, but yeah, the stopper peg is like nice piece of glass engineering um, and even though this is um, you know 80 years old it's looking prist fairly pristine so it's hardly been used which that wouldn't be true if it was over 200 years old and um, yeah, even the way this part has been made this is like um, the way the mouth of the jug is made this part is very like the Georgian ones of that period, but the handle is not. So the handle is um, is the style that was made made post eighteen seventies. I'll let me show you. So this handle is made by putting a blob of glass here and stretching it round and sticking it at the top like that. I'll try and grab this little cream jug, Regency cream jug, and you can see that the way this has been made is that. Um, the glass has been attached here and then stretched around and stuck at the bottom which is why it kind of sits differently at the bottom there yeah so that's that's the difference you can see um, so it's got a feature that's definitely post regardless of the fact that the glass is super quality it's in fantastic condition uh, barely a scratch there is some wear on the bottom yeah, not what you'd expect for something of, of this age. Um, that doesn't always mean anything, because our feeling these are not actually that well used, um, and this one is even marked. So, yeah, but they did this shape and another one with um, three faux rings. I will um, get the catalogue out and show you the two shapes that they did. So I'm showing you here the um, Stuart Crystal um, catalogue from 1927 and you can see uh, the same shape decanter as I was, I was showing you there um, the um, in various different patterns. The Woodchester pattern hasn't been invented yet so they were just using this shape over and over. Um, you can see it there again and if I turn the page and if it'll let me um, there you go, there's one, a different shape, more upright. Um, 
and also below this one is also shaped like some of the Regency decanters as well it looks like it's got step cutting I'm not sure if there's anything else so I've gone to another catalogue 19 um, Stuart Crystal and so this is from the end of the 30s and they're still doing these ones with the faux rings so you can see um, making of these um, so you've got 1927 to 1939. They're going on as almost as probably as long as um, the originals were made for, because I think um, the pattern that the shape that I was showing you earlier, they were making it long after the war as well. So I'm showing a couple of decanters here, and um, one I'm pretty happy is that is the a real thing, a Regency decanter, and the other one I, I believe is a copy. Um, the one I believe is the copy is the one on the right. I will show you why. Um, you can't really tell from this picture, but maybe you can. Color wise, the glass is a lot brighter. Um, the cutting is so precision. Um, yeah, and I would expect normally on the edges like these, I would expect to see. Lots of little nicks, and there is the odd one, because I am talking about something that's probably from the 20s or 30s. Um, but, yeah, not as much as I'd expect. And look at this stopper. The bottom of the stopper is in really good nick. And and actually the clear parts, you know, where it sits and everything, it just seems so neat and tidy. It fits like a piece of engineering. Um it does it and this has been used because it's got a decent amount of wear on the bottom but um and it's getting close to what i would say a regency one should be like but it's um not quite there and it does feel a good deal heavier but it does look shinier so this one is a real regency one um the wear on the base where it actually sits on the table is pretty solid across the flat bit where it actually sits on the table um, and then you've got like there's a chip and, and yeah this is all comparable to how much is used I mean that one has been used and this one has been used but you can see nicks in the I'm not even trying to find nicks they're just there to be seen when you turn it around um, and also look at this here there's a bit of grit in the embedded in the glass so the glass is not as good a quality as the one there's nothing in that one um the stopper has got little chips on it the bottom of the stopper is buggered um being kind and and i know it doesn't absolutely fit superbly either i'm not taking this label off because i can't figure out how i got it on so it's staying on there for now um, and I think I have said, if something is too good to be true, uh, you need to look at it carefully because, yeah, I do have a pair of those. But, yeah, this one's no better. Um, yeah, the bottom, look at the bottom of that stopper. Yeah, just the same. Um, well handled. Where it goes into the bottle, you can see it's been well handled. Um, the base is just as worn. Yeah, everything about this says it's a pair. Look, it can you see there? It's got grit inside the glass as well. So there's another bit of grit. So yeah, so I'm I'm happy that the pair is actually um, good to go. They're they're real Regency ones. So these are the last two I'm going to show you and um yeah and these are i think i've said probably more than once um if it's too good to be true it probably isn't so yeah these are really lovely regency looking decanters there's just the cutting is just, i mean there's plenty of wear on the base yeah but um let me show you the first thing you take the stopper out, it's nice and clean, 
And it's not that that is polished because they did polish them as well in the Regency period. It's, it's about the time they started doing that. But um, yeah, that's too too good. You know, there's hardly a mark on it. And um, yeah, everything about it is so pristine. I haven't been able to find um, any any inclusions, no dirt in the glass, no bubbles. Um, yeah, the glass is superb and shiny. Um, you know, on some of them, you can, if you run your finger around the ring, on the Regency ones, see there's like a cut ring here. If I run my finger around it, it feels really straight. Hardly a twist in it. When you do that on a Regency one, you can feel it wobble backwards and forwards because the cutting wasn't, you know, wasn't as good because it literally was the cutting edge of technology they were doing at that time, um, using steam-powered cutting. So, yeah, I don't know who made these. But, um, and also, uh, just to, yeah, I've got a pair of them. They're both in the same condition, so it's like not what, one of them isn't better than the other. I'm going to stop on that one. Yeah, that would be unlikely. Um, and it's a very unusual stopper type as well, with this kind of mushroom look. And look at the superb quality, like like an Irish decanter. Um, glass from that time. Yeah, these are really nice quality things. I got them really cheap, so I wasn't going to call about them maybe not being right. There's a decanter in the back in here. Yeah, he's got 1810 on that. So I have a pair of those. Mine are a bit smaller than that. Um, with almost exactly the same cutting on it. And I'm, I'm umming and ahhing on those and whether they're copies or not. When I do part two of my um, videos with copies, I will show it. And um, just why I'm kind of like umming and ahhing. So I have on my lap here... Um, the Decanter, Ancient to Modern, by Andy McConnell, and he kindly has a section on reproductions and fakes, and I'll just show you. So this is the kind of thing you're up against here. Um, who's that? One and three, oldest you can say. Albert Glassworks, uh, 1896 to 1948, these three are from. So, yeah, I've ne never even heard of Albert Glassworks, but it shows you that kind of like everybody was doing it. Um, there's some American ones there. Yeah, I will. Um, there's a, one with a pulley ring. I'll do a section on pulley rings. And actually, I have a a copy. Um, from a, of one of those. Look at these here. You get the idea. So um, I'll go on to another book. So this is um, Andy McConnell's other book called, also called The Decanter, but an illustrated guide to glass, I think, from 1650. And I think this one is a bit better. Um, yeah, this decanter here, I've actually seen a pair of these for sale on eBay for a huge amount of money. Uh, so watch out for those if you're not careful. Um, I think this one looks like it's working for us. I think, um, yeah, this one looks very plausible because it's not even particularly fancy. And then if I go over the page, look, this one's those are faux rings, so that one's a giveaway. All right, over here, you can see how good these copies are. White Friars, yeah. Walsh Walsh, got these in here, these are, um, these ones are all from the um, Edinburgh and Leith factory, yeah. that's that American page again, that's a bit more, this is, this is, Shocking bit. So Irish ones. Look at this Irish molded one here. And 
look at that. Yeah, I have a glass like that, in fact. But I think mine's real. Oh, God, I'm dreaming. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it shows you what's out and about. So I'm showing you here um, a page from uh, a book called 20th Century British Glass by Charles Hadmatch. I'll put the name in the description because I'm not good at pronouncing that. Um, this is a range of glass called Ligon, um, Rhythm Pattern by Stevens and Williams. And yeah, this doesn't look too too bad. But when I show you, I'm just showing you what the glass looks like you know, in the real life, because he's got a picture, but then over the page, he has, um, a, you know, catalog pages, and he's got all sorts of different things. There is a decanter in this range, but also, look here. There you go. A taper decanter. And a rubber. So yeah, um, Ligon glass range is another one that's a bit of a worry. And um, you should be more, just looking at stuff very carefully when you before you buy. So um, there's another reference I'd like to tell you about. I'm not going to start digging through it. It'll take me ages. Um, could be here all night. Um, if you go to the Matt's Lindor, um, website and I will give you a link to that below um, there's a, a if you look at the pre-war catalogs that he has Scandinavian catalogs um, you will see that they were also making copies as well in Scandinavia of a lot of the sort of like Scandinavian style um, glass from that period from the early um, 1800s so yeah um, so I think that's the end of this um, I'm going to show you now and um, yeah so if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and uh, I look forward to seeing you again thank you bye